Abstract algebra is a beautiful area of mathematics that most people unfortunately never see. Unless you're a math major, this is not a course you're going to take in college. So people who study computer science, engineering, physics, they typically don't see too much abstract algebra. So this book here is the book that I actually used to first learn abstract algebra. And this is one of the few math books that I've actually read in its entirety. I've read every single word in this book and I've done most of the exercises. It's a great book, it's only flaw is that it doesn't cover enough materials. So if you have to learn more abstract algebra, you're going to need more books. So in this video, we're going to take a look at this book. I'm going to show you what abstract algebra is. And we're also gonna talk about how to learn abstract algebra. So in order to learn this, you first need to know how to write proofs. So I have another book here, which is very, very praised. Uh, it's very popular and it's very good. It's called How to Prove It, A Structured Approach by Daniel Vellman. So in order to learn abstract algebra, you have to know how to write proofs. So you might think, oh, you should read this book first. No, I think the most fun approach is to get both books and jump in and just start swimming with the sharks right away. Because when you swim with the sharks, you're either gonna learn to swim really fast or you'll get out of the water. And if you do, you can just fall back on this book and focus on the proof writing. But ideally, you do need both in order to learn abstract algebra. Many, many years ago, I taught a few independent studies with students at a college. And basically what I did was I taught them to write proofs and I taught them beginner level abstract algebra because the proofs that you need to construct in abstract algebra at the beginning of a course are actually very simple. So once you have some logic background and some proof writing background, you can actually jump into this and start doing some really, really beautiful mathematics. All right, so let's go ahead and open up this book and take a look inside it. Oh, before I forget, as always, I will leave links in the description of this video to both of these books in case you want to check them out. Abstract Algebra, a first course by Dan Saracino, Colgate, University. Let's take a look at the copyright. 1980 by Dan Saracino and then reissued in 1992 with changes by Waveland Press Inc. Cool. Let's take a look at the contents. So the book starts with sets and induction, then it goes into binary operations, groups, fundamental theorems about groups, powers of an element, cyclic groups, subgroups, direct products, functions, symmetric groups, equivalence relations and cosets, and then counting the elements of a finite group, normal subgroups, homomorphisms, homomorphisms and normal subgroups, direct products and finite abelian groups, silo theorems, rings, subrings, ideals, and quotient rings, some ring homomorphisms, some content with polynomials, and then it talks about uh, you know, transitioning from polynomials to fields, then it talks about unique factorization domains, and it has answers to some of the exercises, but it does lack content compared to a lot of other beginner books, but it is the easiest book to read, in my opinion, when it comes to learning abstract algebra. Section zero is on sets and induction, so this is like a review section for most people. You've probably seen sets, so it talks about sets and induction, and it talks about the notation used throughout the book for the various sets. For example, z is the set of integers, q is the set of rational numbers, r is the real numbers, and the c is the complex numbers. So very standard notation throughout the book. And I would say that's true in general about the book. All the notation and the computations are fairly standard. You can see here some of the exercises. Many of them are computational in nature. Some of them are proof-based. And you do get answers to only some of the exercises in the back of the book, which is the case with uh, most books on abstract algebra. Let's take a quick look here. You see there's answers here to some of the exercises. So you don't get a ton in terms of answers, but you, could, you do get something. And I think that's always better than absolutely nothing. Section one is on binary operations. So we're not even to groups yet. He just talks about binary operations and there's an entire section devoted to it. So you can see why this is a beginner book. Again, if you compare this to other more advanced books, for example, Dummett and Foote, they're gonna blow through all of this content in very few pages. Whereas with a book like Saracino's, you know, it takes its time. Finally, in section two, we get to groups. And here he defines a group. So suppose that G is a set and star is a binary operation on G. Star is associative. There is an element E in G such that X star E equals E star X equals X for all X and G. That's the identity element. 
And then it talks about inverses. For each element x and g, there is a y in g such that xy is yx, which is equal to e. So basically, a group is a set with a binary operation. The operation is associative. There's an identity element in the set. And every element has an inverse. If you have all of those conditions, you have what's called a group. So a simple example of a group would be the set of real numbers under addition. Um, addition is a binary operation on the set of real numbers. It's associative. So there's no problem there. The identity element is 0, right, because x plus 0 is 0 plus x, and that's x. And for any element x, uh, we have the element negative x, which when you add it to x, you get 0. So there we go. The set of real numbers under addition is a group. So very, very easy to justify certain groups. And it goes through and it gives you plenty of examples about groups. And it gets really fun uh, when you get to the actual proofs when you start proving things uh, on your own. And there are some proofs in this section, but you don't really start seeing the proofs until you get like here. Here's where you start seeing more proofs. Because sure, you have to prove like certain things are groups. And that's very tedious and long, but it's still a good exercise. Here's where you start proving you know, some results and stuff. So fundamental theorems about groups. For example, here we, he proves the uniqueness of the identity element the uniqueness of inverses. I have videos for all of these things actually here on my YouTube channel. And then here we have another theorem. If G is a group, then for any X and G, the inverse of the inverse is the original element. So stuff like this is really fun to prove. And you know he does a fairly good job explaining everything. Um, but I always think it's better to write your own proofs. You know, when you're learning, try to write your own proofs. And of course, having a book to fall back on uh, like this one is critical. Now, this is not a perfect book. Um, you know, you're going to struggle. Learning abstract algebra is hard. It takes a lot of effort and time. But I do think that this is absolutely the best book for beginners, in my opinion, when it comes to learning abstract algebra. This book has great examples, which I think is a big plus for any book on abstract algebra. So you're going to find more examples in this book than you would in a book, uh, say, by Lang, for example. Lang's algebra is completely terse and filled with tons of information, but it lacks examples. This is the opposite of that, right? This is not supposed to be a terse, rigorous book. Um, it's rigorous, but it's not terse. He tries to basically hold your hand and help you out as much as possible. I mean, look at all these examples here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a lot of examples. Nine examples, right? So he gives you nine examples. So. He did not hold back when it came to effort uh, when he wrote this book. So it's just a masterpiece of a book. Textbooks like this, I think, are priceless because you have all of this content and it's all correct. And by the way, as far as typos, I haven't found any mistakes in this book that I can recall. I'm thinking there might have been some typo in one of the exercises, but I probably would have noted it somewhere. And I don't, I don't see any corrections that I've made uh, in this book. I think, from what I can tell, there are no typos in this book. Here are some of the exercises in the section on normal subgroups. And you can see some of them have been circled and erased. That was me probably thinking, oh, I circled it, and you know what, never mind, I don't want to circle it, I don't want to write in my book. So I did most of these, if not almost all of these, at some point in time. And one of the things about the exercises in this book and this is true about all books, really, about most books at least, is that this book has exercises that you're going to see in other books. In particular, if you're taking an abstract algebra class and you're studying for a particular test, for example, maybe you have a test on normal subgroups, this is a great book to purchase as a supplement because you can buy this book and then you can work out as many exercises as you can from this book to get more practice. So, it's a good way to study for advanced math classes, and it's one of the reasons I have so many books. I actually have over 26 different uh, abstract algebra books uh, because I collect math books. But when it comes to any particular subject, I guess besides calculus, I probably have more abstract algebra books than any other subject. And that's because I studied a lot of abstract algebra in graduate school. I had to learn a lot of it in order to pass um, you know, certain tests and classes and things like that. Another sign that we're looking at a very beginner-friendly book is that he has an entire section on functions. So he starts by defining a function, and he does it uh, two different ways here. And then they talk about one-to-one -one functions and onto functions and bijections, and they give examples um, that were given before. 
or they give new examples. And I, it's just a wonderful book because it's talking about functions. This is supposed to be a prereq. So he spends a lot of time on prereqs, which is good. This makes it an ideal book for self-study. But again, it's not perfect. There, there, is, there is no perfect book. People always want to know like what the best book is. I would say this one, but it's not a perfect book, right? Because you're going to get stuck doing you know, a lot of the math. These exercises here, I've done pretty much all of these. And again, these are common problems that you're going to see uh, in other classes. If you were to take a class on discrete math, for example, you'd probably see a lot of these problems. If you took a course on proof writing, you'd probably see a lot of these problems. So having sections like this are quite refreshing. And he introduces it right before symmetric groups, which is important, and it's a logical place to put it. Uh, the treatment on symmetric groups is pretty good still. You know, these are harder to learn. It's harder to learn about symmetric groups than it is uh, about other groups when you're first learning. But he does a good job here, uh, I think, with the notation and the multiplication of cycles. He explains it well. Um, cycle multiplication basically is what you see here, this multiplication. And a lot of times books don't have a lot of examples. This one has a few examples. It'd be better if it had more. I actually have videos on my YouTube channel um, with examples of just multiplying cycles because I know that it's not something that you find a lot in books. This book also does a great job on equivalence relations and cosets. He basically goes through all of it right here, section nine, equivalence relations and cosets. So from the beginning, he defines a relation and then talks about an equivalence relation and just breaks it down, right? Breaks down all the theory, proves everything, and then they go on to normal subgroups by defining a certain equivalence relation, which you see here. And they talk about cosets. And then after that, um, they go into normal subgroups uh, a little bit later over here in chapter 11. So it's leading up to that. So all of this is very linear, by the way. So one thing you should know about abstract algebra, it's not like a calculus book. You can just open it up to the middle of the book. I mean, I guess you can. You can do that, but you're going to be like, what's a, what's a group? You know, we're talking about normal subgroups. What's a group? So a lot of the stuff, it, it builds. And you'll notice that with mathematics, higher level math, it's, it's, there's a lot of building blocks. But it's OK to skip around. I think it's good for you. For example, if you wanted to, just as an example, you could start with rings. I mean, and there are, there are abstract algebra books that are written that actually talk about rings in the first 30 pages, right? That's, that's a thing. So you can jump here and learn a little bit about rings, which is kind of fun, right? It's kind of fun. So yes, you should know how to write proofs, but you can buy this book and start reading about rings. I mean, why not, right? As long as you can read, um, you should be able to learn a lot of this stuff. You'll have some hangups, though, for example, here. This is a notation that's introduced earlier, and you know, so certain things you won't get right away if you just jump into this book and start reading about rings. And that's always the case with mathematics. That's why I think it's better to approach it with a very positive mindset and an open mind, and just being aware that you're going to get stuck when you try to explore subjects uh, like this one. Well, there you have it. That's how you can learn abstract algebra. Just get a really good book like this one and just start reading it and working through it. Obviously, knowing how to write proofs is a prereq, so you definitely want to uh, get a book on proof writing. I definitely recommend this one. I'll leave links in the description of this video to both of these. Also, if you're not a subscriber, consider hitting that subscribe button today. It always helps to get more subs. If you use Instagram, check me out on The Real Math Sorcerer. And if you're interested in learning more math, including abstract algebra, I actually do have an abstract algebra course on the Udemy uh, platform please use my website, mathsorcerer.com, if you want to check out my courses. Again, that's mathsorcerer.com or freemathfits.com, or check the link in the description of any of my videos to check out my course on abstract algebra. And I have other math courses there too, calculus, algebra, trig, all the good stuff. Again, it's mathsorcerer.com for my courses. Until next time, good luck, take care. And if you're trying to learn abstract algebra and you're struggling, just know it's a struggle for everyone. Good luck.